You know, fasting does quite the opposite of what you might think. People think they're going to be super hungry, they think it's going to be difficult, and quite honestly, it's the opposite. You see, we have other things that completely help us out in the world of hunger and cravings. When you're fasting, you don't have these massive surges of hunger. You don't desire to eat these specific things. And the weird thing is, is most of us just kind of go on through our life and not really paying attention to it. But the reality is there's some science behind why fasting completely obliterates hunger and cravings. You're watching sixpackabs.com. I'm Thomas DeLauer, the lead trainer and lead nutritionist over here, and also the creator of the science-based six-pack program, which is the world's leading intermittent fasting program. So today, let's break down fasting and the world of cravings. Okay, so the number one reason that you don't end up having cravings when you're fasting is a really, really, really simple one. Okay, this is probably one you've heard before. You don't have the obvious blood sugar rises and falls. Straightforward, that's, that's it. Okay, when you're not eating, you're not having a rise in blood sugar that's causing this subsequent increase in insulin that's gonna therefore cause a drop in blood sugar and you're not gonna have you on that roller coaster ride. It makes it pretty straightforward. By keeping your insulin levels low and your blood sugar nice and stable, you're never having those peaks and valleys that are normally gonna make you crave things. Normally, when you have sugar, you're gonna spike your blood sugar. When it drops, it's telling your brain that you need sugar to get it up. So you consume something in the way of carbs or sugar to get your blood sugar up as fast as you possibly can. All right, the number two one is gonna be ghrelin. Okay, ghrelin is our hunger hormone. It is secreted to tell our brain that it's time to eat. Higher levels of ghrelin mean more hunger. Straightforward. So here's two different studies that take a look at two different things when it comes down to ghrelin, but also how ghrelin may end up working when it comes to fasting. Okay, this first study was published in the European Journal of Endocrinology. And the interesting thing about this study is it was looking at ghrelin and its response to the circadian rhythm. So it actually didn't really have much to do with fasting. You see, what they found in this study is that ghrelin generally followed a circadian rhythm. So it generally hit the same kind of patterns with people day over day over day, with the lowest levels of ghrelin being first thing in the morning. Now, why is this important? Okay, well, when we look at fasting, obviously you're going periods of time without eating. Well, if you look at the morning time, that's obviously the longest period of time we've gone without eating, whether you're fasting or not, and ghrelin levels are low. So it doesn't really add up. You see, most people tell you that the longer you go, the hungrier you get. Well, this doesn't apply at all. First thing in the morning, our ghrelin levels are nice and low, which defies the odds. You see, after a long period of not eating, we have the lowest ghrelin levels by and large. That's pretty darn cool. That proves right there that the whole eating every two hours or eating three square meals a day kind of thing doesn't really apply. Now, the other thing that they found was that normally we start seeing peaks in our ghrelin levels around the times that we would normally eat. So what this means is that we start establishing a learned hormonal behavior. You see, our hormones are starting to predict when we do eat. So the more frequently you do eat, yeah, you might start seeing more responses in ghrelin simply because it's telling you, hey, it's time to eat. Normally you're eating around this time. But in the sake of fasting, you're conditioning yourself to not have that happen. So your brain signaling gets a little bit whacked out in a good way. It doesn't start sending a response to increase more hunger. You're, you're basically just able to go a longer period of time because you don't have this hormonal response that's just going up in relation to when you normally would eat. The other thing this study found that was interesting is that ghrelin levels would start to decline two hours after they would peak, whether you ate or not. So even if you didn't eat, the ghrelin levels would still come back down. It was like just a cyclical response that didn't really have a whole lot to do with your actual eating patterns. It was flat out circadian. It was just part of your body, part of your mind, part of the overall continuum of life itself. There's another study that was published in the world of fasting and ghrelin. This one was published in the Journal of Clinical Metabolism and Endocrinology. Okay, and it found that over time, the longer the fast, the lower levels of ghrelin. Okay, this took a look at an 84 hour fast. So it was a long fast. And it found the longer that you went along with a fast, the lower your overall ghrelin levels would be. Now, obviously what this suggests is that when you fast, your ghrelin levels are lower. So by and large, when you're actually fasting, you're not going to get hungry. But this has to do with the ketone production. It's usually because when you're fasting, you have an influx of ketones that are anti-catabolic, but they're also very satiating. They make it so you're not hungry. So we have a twofold effect, lower levels of ghrelin, but also increased levels of ketones that make it so you're not hungry. Okay, and lastly, the third reason is we wanna look at dopamine. Okay, dopamine is what triggers us to have that reward sense, right? So like when we have surges of dopamine, it's because we satisfied a reward. People that are addicted to things are constantly seeking out that dopamine rush, okay? So they go to alcohol or they go to whatever they're addicted to to satisfy that dopamine rush. So there was actually a study that was published in the Journal of Neurophysiology. And what this study took a look at was fasting and its relationship with dopamine. 
So it found that when subjects were fasting, they had a change, an alteration in their somadentric dopamine levels. So basically, how their body and how their brain would actually see dopamine. So it worked to their advantage. So in this particular study, which was actually done on mice, they did find that their relationship with dopamine changed. So meaning over just even relatively short periods of fasting, they weren't having to seek out the kinds of behaviors or the kinds of things that would normally solve their dopamine itch. So basically, over time, it changed the brain's sort of physiology in a way, or the neurology, so that the body wasn't craving things nearly as much. Now, of course, this study was done in mice, but it does likely translate over to humans. And it probably has, has to do with simple patterns. You're not in the habit of eating, so you're not creating that dopamine itch all the time. The more you do something, the more you start to crave it. The more you start to crave it, the more that you end up developing a tolerance to it and you need more of it. So if you start abstaining, and fasting is a simple way to abstain, you can solve that issue. So it's not about starving. You're not gonna just starve with fasting. You see, you might mentally have a little roadblock at first, but by far, you're gonna find that you're not hungry, that you don't have cravings. And honestly, you have physiology on your side. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here with sixpackabs.com, and I will see you in the next video.